Hey guys, this is uh, SynthGod Triple X here. Uh, just want to show you guys the super cool power and ease of use of the sample capabilities on the Juno DS, which is kind of like a surprise hit because a lot of people don't know it's got a good sampler. It doesn't sample, but it sure can play back anything you've got that's wave and stereo. Uh, I've tried to load some. Uh, uh, mono samples on this and unfortunately it doesn't read it or doesn't respond to it when I try to load them into uh, memory. Uh, but it does have, and I've learned this by doing some research online of the Juno DS that has 32 megabytes internal so you can at least load up 32 megabytes of sample uh, information, sample data uh, onto the actual Juno DS and while you're performing live you can play and trigger the actual samples from the sample bank here number nine at the very end and luckily uh, here I have uh, one of the coolest it's here loaded with some of my personal sample collections that I've done uh, for reverb sync which are wave files that you can load into any DAW PC or Mac software uh, any VST that loads samples but in this example we're going to be doing uh, the reverb sync uh, a few samples that I've done from the dark Juno collection in stereo with chorus I also have a Moog sample lo uh, loaded in here from the Moog collection for reverb sync and I also have uh, two samples from the Oberheim collection from reverb sync from me on reverb sync and uh, I've loaded them into the actual Juno DS. And the coolest thing is, like I'm saying, you've got 32 megabytes to load. If you're a live performer and you're performing live and you need to have some samples and you don't want to drag your Kronos or your rack sampler or you're having your MPC or whatever that is just bulky and too much just to trigger a few samples, the Juno DS is excellent for a live performance playback sampler and for audio playback. Remember, guys, it has full backup tracks and everything. I am totally digressing, but at least you guys get a little bit more of information that I think Roland is going to give you uh, regarding how awesome this keyboard is and whether they're trying to deter you from uh, buying this instead of the FA06 or the new FA series workstation. I don't know. But remember, 32 megabytes doesn't sound a lot, but I've loaded right now into the actual uh, sampler itself uh, five of my actual best favorites that I would use on stage live. Like I said, two Juno 106 uh, with chorus samples, one Moog lead sample that I got from a, a Little Fatty, and two from the Oberheim Matrix 6. So, and I have to say, this is the really cool thing that no one has really said. So, hopefully, this is for your ears first if you're trying to make a decision on this keyboard. 32 megabytes does not sound a lot, but it is flash. It will hold the uh, samples in the memory itself while the keyboard is off and on. I don't even have to have batteries in it to hold the sample information. It is flash. So you will have up to 32 megabytes of flash uh, in the keyboard that I'm aware of. So far that I've seen, I've had, and I am really blown away because the quality of my samples, I'm not really I'm very happy about my quality of the samples, but they sound really good on the Juno DS. Uh, they sound really you know, 3D, they sound wonderful, they sound alive, they sound lush. All right, let's go ahead and show you how to load samples into the Juno DS. How do I load these samples, Rick? Oh my God, I don't know what to do. First, get your stick that you transferred your awesome samples onto and put into the import folder on the Juno DS formatted thumb drive. After that, make sure you power on your Juno DS with the thumb drive in the back, and then go into the sample import button. You will see your normal page. Here's the sample button, push it. There it goes. Sample import. Scroll over there and then go ahead and hit thine enter button. All right, there is my first sample. I'll load that into user slot 501. And it takes a few seconds. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go way through the whole thing so you can see how long it takes to load one of these samples. So get it at least a good 20 seconds or something, depending on how long your samples are. Remember, the Reverb Sync 
synth collection sample packs from Ondixian Sound Design a la Rick Marston uh, are long samples. Most of them are stereo. A lot of them are mono. Remember, the Juno DS will not import a mono uh, sample for some reason, uh, in my experience. So yeah, I can get some peanuts and a drink and eat that oh, by the time this comes up and working. Ah, there it goes. Okay, now that it's actually in the in synth itself inside its memory, go ahead and exit out twice. It is now in the sample slot. There is my awesome sample. And I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of a release just to make sure that it does. It actually does store the release and cut off of whatever you're doing with your little controller functions into the slot, I guess, with also doing it in less, so you don't have to go inside a bunch of mem uh, menus just to uh, do some small changes with the SDR. So here we go. There it is. I've got it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the rat button. And then, do yes, I like the name. And I'm going to put it in the first slot, 501, where it originally dropped it. Hit enter. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure, silly. And then hit enter. OK, it is writing it into memory. The sound is ready to go. Do that with every single one of these. Fill it up. You've got up to 32 megabytes. Make sure you do save a little bit of room. So about 27, 28 megabytes just for safety loading sake for room. You also have the ability, so you know, if you go back into the sample import, there's sample cleanup, and I believe that kind of helps trim up the extra waste that's on there. Plus, it gives you a full block showing of how much memory you still have in the Juno DS to use. So, whoa, whoa, way, way cool. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, loading all of these individuals in, and I will see you in a few seconds, and you get to hear all of them in action. All right, so uh, as you see, I am here in the uh, actual category section. Here is sample, which is number nine. I've got the first sample, which is a Juno 106. Uh, the sound is called Cassiopeia. That is a Juno 106, baby, on your Juno DS. Now, I've selected a second one. I've actually got four good samples here. Uh, this one is called Gemini. It's another Juno 106. the samples are really long because the, my sample collections they're not short they're all least minimum 10 seconds maximum up to 40 seconds long so you don't have to worry about having short cutoff samples little snippety dippets no silly loops all you have to do is hit one key and you're playing that sound Little Fatty. This is a sound, a sound that I've got called Mr. Spock. sound that I've got loaded already into the Juno DS for my live performance, if I wish, is an Oberheim Matrix 6 sound called Analog.
cool string slash pad. Another awesome Oberheim Matrix sample that I have from the Reverb Sync Oberheim Synth Collection. Gold. sample you want to 32 megabytes flash ram inside the juno ds very good for performers who are wanting to be able to play live and have their five or six main sounds from a synth or a software application so they don't have to bring it in just save it as a stereo wave and assign it to a location inside the sample slots it will hold it in flash
Um, just want to say there are some cons about the Juno DS, even though I think is phenomenal for what it is. The keyboard is kind of shallow. Uh, you don't really have too much keyboard relief. Uh, if you're a real keyboardist, you might be a little perturbed by that. Uh, also, when you're doing edits with the cutoff, uh, attack, release, those things, so I think is a little bit short. Uh, I expect a little bit longer release. Attack seems to be a little bit, eh, a little long to come up and not really as realistic as you would get on other type of keyboards. Um, all in all, oh yeah, one of the most incredible drawbacks that I have to say about this keyboard, which I, I think is one of the reasons why, and I don't know if it's something that Roland did intentionally, is uh, maybe to deter you from buying this instead of the fa 6s is the sequencer does not send MIDI out to external gear. Your arpeggio sends out MIDI to external gear, so I can control like an ARP Odyssey or whatever, but when you're trying to play a pattern, it does not send MIDI notes to external gear. So if you don't know that, uh, there are some major pluses, awesome sounds, super lightweight to go around on tour, uh, 32 megabytes flash uh, of sample playback, and of course you could play back all of your audio tracks from the pads uh, on the keyboard itself, so you can do your full live backup tracks, sing through the keyboard with vocoder and vocal effects. We know those things are awesome, uh, but remember the cons are for people who are real keyboardists. I highly recommend you get the Juno DS88. At least you'll get your weighted key feel out of it, and it'll be totally worth your effort. But if you're a quick uh, synthesizer player like I am for performance live and just want to do something real quick, I'm not overly a upset about the key relief being short. Uh, hey, it's you know what you get for the price, but. But something that the Korg Kronos doesn't do, which it does do, but it's not as quick as something like, say, a Juno DS or another Juno series or the FA series, uh, of being able to play back media. I cannot believe that to this day that you have to go through so many motions just to get a stereo wave of your backup tracks into onto the 16-track re digital recorder of a Korg Kronos. And uh, where this, I just have to throw in uh, the waves on a stick go into the actual audio button here, assign which songs I want. I can rearrange and play live performances of my backup tracks if I want to play five songs in one arrangement of those five songs on one show and three nights later play a different city with a totally different mix. I can rearrange anything I want to on the fly, sing over it and play over it and then trigger my samples. That for the price is psychotic. It's great. I just wish the keyboard was like say the Phantom S because these are real keys, babe. They make you feel like you're really playing something and that, you know, hey, other than that, the great value for this. Uh, hope you dig the samples. Check out Reverb Sync on Reverb.com and the Sample and Loops collection for these awesome sample collections of vintage analog and digital synthesizers that you could play in a Juno DS or any other hardware sampler or software. Please check those out. I am Rick Marston, Synth God Triple X on Nixian Sound Design signing out. Thank you for your time, and I love you. Peace and respect. Bye-bye.